Tesla full self-driving, their newest version, 14.2.2. It's getting some amazing, amazing reviews from customers. People are saying they think that it's just gone up a level to the point where it's very close to being hands-free. I haven't seen this kind of positive feedback for a couple of years. It seems that this is the most positive change that's been made so far to full self-driving, 14.2.2. But the funny thing is, 14.2.2 comes along, and then a few days later, 14.2.2.1 comes along. So, yeah, what's going on here? Well, I'll explain it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. Guys, happy Christmas, happy new year. And thanks for being with us for the past 12 months, whatever it is since we started the channel. Either way, I hope your family's safe and all the best for the new year. Tesla for self-driving version 14.2.2 is receiving really positive reviews from owners. Several drivers have been praising the build's lack of hesitation during lane changes and its smoother decision-making among others. There's actually been a lot of changes to Tesla's full self-driving version 14.2.2. I'll go through what they are. The update, which started rolling out on Monday, adds features like dynamic arrival pin adjustment. So far, early testers have reported really smooth driving with confident performance even at night or on twisty roads. Now, I haven't seen it being tested in the snow or in a hailstorm, which is what people say is the Achilles heel of Tesla for self-driving. But anyway, longtime Tesla owner and full self-driving user, BLKMDL3, shared a 10-hour impression of full self-driving version 14.2.2, not 0.2.2.1, saying that the system exhibited zero lane change hesitation and extremely refined lane choices. He praised Mad Max mode, that's the aggressive driving mode, its performance, stellar parking in locations, including ticket dispensers, and impressive canyon runs, even in dark conditions. Now, Tesorati said this, fellow full self-driving user Dan Berkland reported an hour of full self-driving version 14.2.2 in the nighttime driving with zero hesitations at night and buttery smooth confidence reminiscent of robo-taxi rides in areas like Austin, Texas. Veteran full self-driving user Holmar's catalog, I watch his videos on YouTube, he demonstrated voice navigation using Grok, while Tesla owner Devin Olsen completed a nearly two-hour drive with full self-driving version 14.2.2 in heavy traffic and rain and in those two hours, I believe that there was only one intervention in heavy traffic and rain at night time. That is another level, yeah? That's that's gone to a new level. Some analysts are saying that Tesla stock price is going to rise significantly over the next few months. To be fair, it's already very high, but I do think it's going to go up more significantly over the next 12 months. That's my guess. Full self-driving has been getting rave reviews, even from Tesla's competition, the CEO of Xping or Xiaopeng, he went to California uh, a few weeks ago and he was very shocked by how good Tesla's full self-driving was. A credit to him for saying that too. Tesla's been making a lot of big, big moves and I think that um, they're going to really pay off. So even the CEO of Xpeng said that he believed Tesla was at near level four. If your, your biggest, like, rival really xpeng is probably tesla's biggest rival because you know byd is not the kind of company that xpeng are xpeng are like a, an ai company very similar to tesla they're working on their own bots which are very good their own robots uh they're obviously very focused on self-driving in exactly the same way that tesla is using predominantly camera only vision they're very similar companies tesla and xpeng and if xpeng are saying this um You've got to probably ignore the noise. If you're one of those people that's you know addicted to negativity about Tesla and you're on, you're going to electric all the time to um, indulge your negative addiction, I honestly think you're just in a vacuum chamber where you're getting told what you want to hear, not actual objective reality. Now, don't get me wrong. I know some huge Tesla fans can be a bit over the top and exaggerate things, but anyway, let's have a look at the actual features here, guys, from Tesla version fourteen point two point. 2.1. If you'd like to book a paid consultation, uh, you can do so 
and I'll put a link in the description below. If you want advice on what electric car to buy, solar systems, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. So this, these, these videos were filmed using 14.2.2 flat, no numbers after that, but there's a new change now. Yesterday, 14.2.2.1. So upgraded. So these are the things that have been done for Tesla's full self-driving. Upgraded the neural network vision encoder, leveraging high resolution features to further improve scenarios like handling emergency vehicles, obstacles on the road, and human gestures. That was added in 14.2. That's new. Uh, added arrival options for you to select where full self-driving should park, in a parking lot, on the street, in a driveway, in a parking garage, or at the curbside. That's getting pretty damn impressive, right? You've got those choices. Added handling to pull over or yield for emergency vehicles. For example, police cars, fire trucks, ambulances, it can recognize them. Now, before I go on, I should mention my brother-in-law's ordered a Model Y performance and he's getting full self-driving. It's meant to be coming within, you know, soon, very soon. So I'm very keen to get in that and test it, see what it's like, and I'll let you know. Added navigation and routing into the vision-based neural network for real-time handling of blocked roads and detours. Added additional speed profile to further customize driving style preference. Improved handling for static and dynamic gates. Improved offsetting for road debris, like tires, you know, when tires uh, either tear to pieces and fall off trucks or cars, and also even complete tires that might have fallen off on their own, their whole tire. Also, it can avoid tree branches and boxes, so those have been added. Improve handling of several scenarios, including unprotected turns, lane changes, vehicle cut-ins, and school buses. Improve full self-driving's ability to manage system faults and recover smoothly from degraded operation for enhanced reliability. Um, another one added alerting for residue buildup on interior windshield that may impact front camera visibility. If affected, visit service for cleaning. Added automatic narrow field washing to provide rapid and efficient front camera self-cleaning and optimize aerodynamics wash at higher vehicle speed. So basically they've improved the camera's ability to wash itself at higher speeds. That's pretty awesome. Now I should point out that's only for um, 2026 plus Model Y. So basically Model Y is from the last six months and new versions of Model Y that will get that feature. Camera visibility can lead to increased attention, monitoring sensitivity. Um, there's also upcoming improvements, including overall smoothness and sentience and parking spot selection and parking quality. So I can assess whether or not one parking spot is better than another one. Now, guys, I mentioned that Tesla's new patent for their new cameras, um, new front cameras, by the way, not cameras for the rest of the car, just for the front. It's quite a remarkable new patent. It's a very, very complex new camera system that Tesla is developing. And if you're interested in that video, I'll put a link in the description below. But it does lead me to wonder um, the reason why is Tesla invent why they invented this new camera system, which is, to be honest, is quite revolutionary. It's because, truthfully, at times, even full self-driving doesn't matter how good it gets with Tesla's existing hardware setup. I don't think it's capable completely of dealing with sun at certain angles. When the sun's at a certain angle, it's hitting that front camera, the camera, the car struggles. And that's when you can sometimes get phantom braking. So that this new camera is meant to be the solution for the phantom braking. So if you want to see that video, I'll put a link in the description below. Bye-bye. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery, or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, 
um, nothing, not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.